Hello, uh, welcome to another Matter.js physics engine tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to attempt to make something like this. Now, you might be wondering, huh, look at that, that's a Matter.js page. So one thing I didn't realize in my previous videos is that Matter.js on the website has a page you can click on called Demos, where you can actually look at these different examples one by one. And one of them is for creating these uh, chains, uh, otherwise known as bodies connected by constraints. And those constraints can be springy, elastic constraints. And so there's a lot of things you can build from this particular idea. Now, another thing I'll notice about this demo page, which is great, is that it actually has an interface for manipulating a lot of these particular variables. So, you know, I've been kind of in the code, just changing numbers and refreshing. Obviously, building an interface to sort of tweak and test different values is much better, and this is built in right into the demo page. So what I'm gonna do is essentially, what I wanna try to do is recreate exactly this uh, chain by connecting a bunch of these circular bodies uh, by constraints. And here's the thing. So looking, uh, I was looking at the matter.js documentation, and it actually has something called composites. So composites are, uh, composites module, it says right here, contains factory methods for creating composite bodies. So this is what you can use actually, oh, I just wanna have a chain of things, or I wanna have a stack of things. And there's even a composite for a car, which is really just like a couple shapes and some wheels maybe. But um, here's the thing, I'm gonna do this video and make this tutorial without using the built-in composites. Certainly if what I want is a chain, using the built-in composite chain might make this easier, but I wanna build this in a flexible way that I could kind of make anything. You know, I could make a chain that has branches coming out of it. So I wanna have total flexibility to see what happens if I individually create all the particles and constraints one by one and attach them uh, in a completely customizable way. Maybe this is a bad idea, but I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, okay, so what do I need to do? So the first thing, just to sort of work this out. So, okay, this is my program currently. This is where I am. All it does, all it has is a single ground body. So it's the same ground body that I've had in previous videos. I also made a change from the previous videos where that circle object is now called particle. But I haven't put any particles into the world. Uh, I could, however, put one. So I could say var p equals a new particle, and I'm just gonna make it at uh, 200 comma 100 with a radius of 10. And then I could just say in draw p dot show. Oh, it's actually pushing particles into an array. So what happened? p is not defined. Oh yeah, but oh, well, I should, I'm using that array. So let me say particles dot push p and then uh, let me actually uh, iterate over that array with my non for each loop. <laughs> Uh, and uh, just say uh, particles index i dot show. So let me just get one thing. So there's my one particle. Now I want to add a second one. What I want to do is I'm going to so make that p1 and I'm going to say p2 is uh, 200, uh, 150 and I'm going to push both of those into the array. So there's two of them. Now these have no relationship. They bounce off of each other and move apart. What I want to do is I want to use something in matter.js and this ex same idea. So it's called a constraint. I didn't spell that right. Constraint, <laughs> like train is in there I think somewhere, right? Uh, const constraint, um, it's called that in matter.js. But if I were in box2d, this would be called a joint. If I were in toxic libs, it would be called a spring. So there's lots of other terms for the same thing. It's an entity that connects two bodies. Now it does not have any geometry. So the idea is if there are two particles, I want to be able to connect them with this thing called a constraint. But one thing to note about the constraint is it doesn't have geometry. So something will fall through it. So there are other scenarios where what you might want to do is make like a bridge. And, but it's sort of like a, a springy bridge where you could, what you could do is make a bunch of rectangular bodies that abut each other and then you could actually put, con con connect them with constraints but leave, there's very little space between them. Um, so that's another scenario that it could do in a coding challenge or something. But here I just want to be able to attach these two bodies. Now this is always much more complex than you think <laughs> because there's a lot of things I need to set. I need to say body, which, which two bodies? So body A and body B. 
But also I need to say, where is the constraint attached? Is it at its center? Or, you know, I could, I might want to do something like this where I kind of connect them from uh, the edges. So uh, in uh, a matter.js, I'm pretty sure has a uh, way of doing this. And I think it's called point A and point B. So there's the bodies and then the point is the, not the location of the constraint, but the offset of the constraint relative to maybe the center point of the body. Then I also need usually a property called like length, which is often the rest length. So you think about a spring, you know, if you pull on a spring, it starts to but eventually it comes to a rest. So what is its sort of resting point where there will be no force, um, either contracting or expanding it? So excuse me, the rest length, there's also, what else would there be? Uh, maybe there's a kind of like strength per, uh, option, like how, is it very rigid? Is it like a rubber band? That type of thing. So all, just to make this single thing that connects the two bodies, I need to set a lot of parameters. So let's go try to do that. Um, over here, okay. Um, so what I want to do is, now I want to try to make a constraint. So uh, let's go look. Constraint, I have that page open. Matter.constraint module contains methods for creating and manipulating constraints. Constraints are, are used to specify fixed distance between two bodies, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. Stiffness, springs are elastic. So I think this is what I want. Matter.constraint.create. So I'm going to say, um, I'm gonna just make a, a variable called options. Then I wanna say matter.constraint.create. Now, what I, what I could do here is say, uh, I could add another uh, alias, just constraint equals matter dot uh, constraint, right? I think that's what I want here. And then now I can just say, uh, sorry, constraint dot create. So var, <laughs> I'm thinking here, var constraint equals. So I want to, so now I'm just going to, that word constraint, the more you look at it, the more it looks like it's spelled wrong. <laughs> I think it's right. I want to create a constraint and with options. So create options. So I could certainly put the object with all the parameters right in here, but I just want to have a separate object where I keep track of this. So what are the options? Uh, see what properties, see properties section below for detailed information on what you can pass via the options object. Ah, properties. Body A, body B, ID, label. These are probably things to keep track of that I don't need. Length. So these are things that I need. So let's look. So body A, I want to connect P1, that's the first one. Oh. But it's not P1, right? My particle is my own object. Particles, the body is the thing that matter cares about. So P1's body to body B, P2's body. And then I also have point A, which is that offset, which I'm just gonna make, ooh, how do I set the offset? The offset is an object maybe with an X and a Y. So I'm going to, just have that offset be an X and a Y of zero. It probably does that by default. So actually, let's just not put it in there. But if I wanted to offset it differently, I think I would put this in as an option. Uh, and then uh, length is probably good. So let's do a length. Let's, let's give that as like 50 pixels between them. And then what was the last one? Stiffness. Uh, one means the constraint is very stiff. Point two means it acts like a soft spring. So let's try that stiffness. Let's try like point three, four. So now I am assuming what I then have to do is do a world dot add world comma constraint. So I've also got to tell the physics engine to put that constraint in the world. So now I've created a constraint between those two bodies with a specific rest length and a stiffness. I've created it and I've put it in the world. So now let's run it, oops, constraint, oh, because it is spelled wrong. The more you look at it, the more it becomes spelled wrong because I spelled it wrong. Constraint, <laughs> yeah, that's why it's spelled wrong. Uh, so let's see, look at that. Whoa, so you can see that that constraint, now let's, let's, uh, let's offset it a little bit so we can maybe see more what's going on, there we go. So you can kind of get the feeling that like they're constrained together. Now the thing is, I can't see anything, but I could draw a line between them. So now in draw, I could do something like line, uh, this is a terrible way to do it, particles zero dot, <laughs> dot body dot position 
oh, this is like the worst thing I could ever possibly do, right? Draw a line between this first one's x and y, whoops, and the second one's x and y. And let's see what we get here. Now, I've got a line, so you can sort of see. Now it sort of feels more like it's working. So this is the whole thing, again, I can't say this enough about physics engines. There's the actual physics, and then there's what you're drawing. Mostly you want those things to match, but sometimes you, maybe you want to not reveal what's connecting what, or maybe you want to draw that in a different way. So there's a lot of possibilities to how you think about this. So now here's the thing. What I actually want to do is create a chain of these. So there's a bunch of different ways we could think about approaching this, but let's just build with what we have. So first of all, this idea of creating two separate particles and pushing them and then creating this constraint here, I, I, I need a, a kind of loop to do this. And again, I could use the, the built-in matter.js composites, but I'm going I'm to be stubborn here and do this in my own way. So I'm going to say var, let's think of it as going, let's actually have it go horizontally. So let's start as an x at like 20 pixels. Let's have x go all the way to you know, the width minus 20, which is like 380. And then I'm going go, uh, to go every 20 pixels. So every 20 pixels, and I'm going to comment a lot of this stuff out. I want to create a particle at x comma 100. So I want to put a whole row, a row of particles across. There we go. Now, ignore the fact that that line is drawn there. <laughs> There's no, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, where, where is that line drawn? Let's take that out, comment that out. And uh, that's a lot, that's a lot of stuff. Let's, uh, let's, let's move um, every 40 pixels. Okay, great. So we can see here, there's a whole bunch of things. Now we're not really, it's, it's, there's not a lot of interplay here because they're all perfectly falling. So it's almost like there is a constraint. But let's change this now. So what do I want to do? I want to also make a constraint. And what I want is for, uh, I want to say var p, and then I want to say var previous equals particles, oh, Let's, okay, let's create, let's create a variable before the loop called previous, and it's going to be equal to null. Then, uh, after I create that particle and, in theory, create the constraint, I'm going to say previous is equal to p. So what I want to do is I want to connect each particles with the previous one. That's all I want to do. So every time I go through this loop, make a particle, add it, and connect it to the previous one. However, I don't want to do that for the first one, right? So I do want to say only do this if, if previous exists. So only make this constraint if previous exists. So now if I were to do that, we can see, look at this. It's kind of, you can see, ooh, they're definitely connected. There's a constraint and they're all like moving along. That's cool. Now, so that's pretty good. Now here's the thing. What if I were to allow, uh, what if I were to allow one of them to be uh, static? So I could say, I could, I could add an, oh, static's a bad, is a key word in JavaScript. So let me, what's another word I could use for static? Fixed. So I'm going to say, is static fixed? So I could uh, pass in, uh, you know, I could say here, like, if there is no previous, make, uh, let's see, uh, I'm trying to think of like, there's like, I just wanted the first one, eh, there's, this is kind of, I'm doing this, at a, there's probably, a, there's a nicer way to do this, I'm sure, but let's just say, um, let's just say uh, fixed equals false, so I'm going to pass in, there. none of them are fixed, but if uh, previous if not previous, then uh, fixed equals uh, fixed equals true. So I'm just going to make the first one. If there's no previous, then I want it to be fixed. So if I do this, oops, uh, I've got an error on, on particle.js line number five, uh, which is, oh, there needs to be a comma here because I added another property. And there we go. So you can see that first one is fixed. 
So <laughs> what I also want to do is now I'm just going to like kind of change where they are. I'm going to uh, start this one in, um, I'm going to start it more in the center and maybe I'll add more of them, but uh, make them smaller and do something like this. So you can see, whoa, and maybe that rest length should actually be uh, something more like uh, 20. And there we go. So now you can see there's what I was kind of looking to do. I created this idea of a chain that are all connected. And if I made it much longer, like if I went all the way up to 600 to add even more, right, you're going to see it's going to kind of even, uh, it's going to collide with the ground uh, and kind of stop there. That's sort of weird. Oh, you know what? It went through the bottom because the bottom, oh, it's around the bottom because the bottom doesn't extend past the screen. So anyway, you, this could be, obviously fixed in a lot of ways, but let's just leave it at this. So this is what I was attempting to do. Now here's the thing. There's a lot of improvements that I could make for this potentially. Number one is, um, you know, I've kind of got a lot of code just in the weeds here in the main program. So I, in the same way that I had this idea of encapsulating this idea of a matter.js particle, a body into an object that keeps track of its own body and other things, I could now make a chain object. And a chain is an object that keeps track of an array of particles and those constraints. Also, the way that I've created these constraints, I didn't, you know, I didn't, the same way I wrapped a body into a particle, I could wrap a constraint into a spring so I could write my own show function so I could draw lines between those things. That might be a bit more interesting, uh, you know, um, and so, you know, because maybe what I actually want to do is, is render this in a different way. So there's a lot of possible ways, but this hopefully gives you the basic idea. Now, the thing that I want to add in the next video is how can I actually click on this and drag it around? So, uh, and, and you know, the other thing that you know, I might think about doing is what if I were to connect them from the left to the right and then make it a kind of bridge that things fall in and, and kind of rest on. So that would be another thing to maybe try, play with the spring valves. So many things you could try here. So hopefully this showed you how constraints work in matter.js to give you a basic idea of what you could do. And in the next video, I'm going to add a mouse constraint. See you there. <laughs>